Hello, and thank you for joining us for today's podcast. My name is John Nelson. I'm the Vice President of Operations, Sales, and Marketing at BBI International and UAS Magazine. We are talking today about the UAS Summit and Expo taking place October 13th through the 14th at the Alaris Center in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Today, joining me on our podcast is Asaf Munsa. He's the CTO at Defense Solutions. Thank you for joining us. Hello, and thank you for having me. <laughs> Appreciate you calling in. Uh, now, you're on a panel that's titled Counter UAS, the Future of Drone Security and Defense, and that's taking place on Wednesday, October 13th. But before we get into that panel, can you tell us a little, a little more about Defense Solutions, uh, what you guys do, um, and some of your differentiations that you guys have in the market? Sure. Sure. So Defense Solutions is the leading provider of counter UAS systems, so it's a perfect panel for us. And uh, you have several methods of uh, countering uh, the risks that come from UAS. We all like UAS, and it's part of our lives, but it also brings some risks and, uh, and problems. And countering that, uh, you can do it in several ways. And different is leading uh, a method of cyber uh, counter uh, to UAS, which has a lot of uh, uh, advantages, uh, most notably the continuity. Uh, you can uh, mitigate the risk from UAS while not disturbing anything else and do it very effectively. So uh, different is, uh, is leading uh, that. Great, great. Now, t- can you tell us a little about the industries? Talk a little bit about the industries you serve. I know you go from you have a whole length of different sectors that you work in, from military to air force to border protection to to maritime. Can you talk a little bit about all those different um, uses sure. for, of your uh-huh. technology? Sure, absolutely, and uh, and actually, there are way more interested, uh, industries than we originally expected. So there is obviously the military type of industry where drones can be used to attack or gather intelligence, and uh, they need some counter drone solutions. But also uh, border patrol, uh, where there are all kinds of smuggling uh, contrabands and uh, uh, transferring uh, illegal material from one side of the border to the other. Uh, you have a uh, critical infrastructure that you need to defend airports, which is an important vertical where we know that the uh, UAS could disturb the operation of an airport like uh, happened in Gatwick in the end of uh, 2018 and stop the airport uh, traffic for three days. Uh, you have uh, all kinds of events like the Super Bowl or uh, World Championship where you have tens of thousands of entities and a drone incident could stop those uh, those uh, events or disturb them or even uh, do some damage. A prison, where contraband is also smuggled into prisons, uh, and we see that happens. So uh, you have a, a, a lot of, of different verticals, and each of them uh, is different also in the environment that it operates as, at. So I also want to differentiate between a rural environment or a, something that the military would uh, generally see or a border environment to an urban environment where it's, it's very noisy as far as the radio goes, the radio frequency goes, and you don't have necessarily a line of sight. And, and you have a lot of collateral damage risk from tackling something that flies in the sky, like a grand sitting up in the sky and could fall down or land in the wrong place, or while you're mitigating it, you can damage other things like disturb communication uh, during uh, your mitigation. So all of these are different verticals, both in their needs, in the way UAS disturb them, in the way they can tackle risks, and in the environment that, uh, that uh, those systems work at. Great, great. Yeah, you know, one of the th- things that seems to, to be um, one of your... I, whether it's a key differentiation, I know other some companies do it, uh, but I know you guys, you know, your non-jamming technology, your non-kinetic, uh, there's no need to line of sight. Those are some of the big 
big things that really uh, propel defense solutions in in you know in certain situations. So can you give us a can you give us an example of you know almost like a case study where and you don't need to give names for you know for privacy purposes or tell us the exact situation but can you talk a little bit about a a, a time when when you when your company was able to you know use its counter drone security and it really made a difference uh, sure, I, I can give several types of, uh, of examples. So first of all, uh, you nailed it right uh, on. Uh, uh, we are not ja- not a jammer, which means that uh, people can still fa- fly uh, authorized drones around a drone that is getting mitigated right now. We're not kinetic, so some- nothing will fall a- out of the sky, and we're, we don't need the direct line of sight, which means that uh, you don't have to see the drone. It, need- it needs to be in a communica- communication range, but... Uh, you can operate that within uh, an, uh, an urban environment. So these are key. But let's go for uh, some uh, examples that uh, showcase that. So uh, uh, one example is one of the major events, uh, major sports events uh, that happened lately. I will not get go into details, but uh, typically uh, there are drones uh, flown by, uh, by uh, people who want to see the event more closely, and those events would be closed down or stopped if if such a drone uh, comes over. And uh, we worked closely with the police forces that uh, were around there and were able to detect and follow uh, drones that were there, and uh, they were able to take over those drones and were able to track and find the pilot and just send the car over to stop the, this disturbance. So both of them worked, uh, both these met- methods worked, both taking over and uh, getting to the pilot. Uh, another uh, example I can take is uh, a border uh, patrol example where contraband uh, was uh, smuggled over. And it, it was con- constantly happening. They could see that with their eyes, but they couldn't stop it from happening because it went uh, to a different place each time. And it's a pretty fast process of dropping the material and, and going away. And we enable them to follow those, both the pilot and the, and the drone, and take over the drone while seizing the pilot uh, at the same time. So uh, all of that without disturbing any of the events around. Wow. Um, I, I find I you yeah. know these examples I find so fascinating and they're so interesting to hear about. It sounds like you know I know J- the new James Bond movie is coming out, but I find it so intriguing. <laughs> it seems like James things out of a James Bond movie or Mission Impossible, but it's becoming more and more uh, you know used, and so we're seeing it more and more. Where before it was it was technology that we just weren't familiar with or saw. So it's really really fascinating stuff. Thank you. Right. Uh, again, we're with Asaf Mansa. He's the CTO of Defense Solutions. He'll be speaking at the UAS Summit and Expo in Grand Forks, North Dakota, next week, October 13th through the 14th. His panel will be on Wednesday, October 13th, and it is titled Counter UAS, The Future of Drone Security and Defense. He's on with a large panel uh, that's chatting uh, about drone security uh, and and so can you talk a little bit about what attendees at the UAS summit will learn from the panel your just panel discussion and your presentation specifically yes definitely um, so uh, the panel is uh, is going to discuss uh, the various methods of uh, tackling or defeat a, a drone or detecting and following a drone, both of them, and compare between them in various uh, environments. Uh, also, uh, we will discuss layered approach of uh, countering drones, like having a, a cyber RF uh, layer like, like ours, but also maybe another layer that could uh, bring the drone down uh, in case that that type of uh, of uh, attack is needed, uh, we'll discuss a lot the life cycle of uh, a drone incident, which could go from detection and alert into 
locating, tracking, following the drone, trying to find the pilot, into identifying whether whether the drone is friend or foe, because you might have an environment with uh, both authorized and non-authorized drones, and you need only to tackle the authorized or, or warn alert uh, from the unauthorized. Uh, and eventually, the the, uh, the life cycle continues into fending off the drone, uh, which means stopping it from flying or disturbing it from flying, and all the way to taking over the drone, which is what we do, taking over and landing it in a safe place. So all this uh, drone life cycle and the incident life cycle, we'll discuss that uh, that a lot. Great. Thank you. Yeah, and, and again... The panel is titled Counter UAS, the Future of Drone Security and Defense. It'll be taking place next week, Wednesday, October 13th. We hope you can join us. Asaf, thank you for joining us today. If someone wants to get a hold of you directly, can they text or uh, email you, call you? What, what's a good way to get a hold of you? Sure. The best way is to email me at asaf at defensesolutions.com. Uh, that's asaf, A S S A S, at D. Uh, dash solutions dot, uh, dot com and, and can, I can make that mail available if you have it on the site and uh, that's the best way I'd love to meet people who are interested in space and uh, uh, expand our, uh, my, my uh, knowledge and uh, discuss with them Great, thank you Thanks for joining us today and we look forward to hearing even more uh, next week at the UAS Summit Thanks so much Thank you